A wet spring has brought temporary drought relief to the west, but the area has faced more severe and longer lasting droughts in the last few decades. That's why Garrett Kamins, the president of North American Weather Consultants, is trying to take matters into his own hands. It's called cloud seeding, and Kamins is in charge of the program. In order for the water to fall out of the cloud deck, it actually has to freeze first and form a snowflake that's heavy enough to overcome the updrafts that are supporting the cloud, and at which point it can then fall down to the ground as either snow or rain. Um, what we do is we help speed up that process of converting supercooled liquid water to a snowflake. In fact, many states have cloud seeding programs to increase rainfall and combat the drought. Here's how it works. You have an airplane target a cloud that's already producing rainfall. The plane will spray silver iodide or dry ice into the cloud. Within the cloud, there are tiny rain droplets that are too light to fall. The silver iodide acts as a nucleus for other rain droplets to condense onto. Once the droplets get heavy enough, they fall to the ground, producing rain. So all we're doing is helping to improve the efficiency of a natural process of converting liquid water in the cloud to a snowflake, which then falls to the ground as precipitation. Garrett, how do you test the efficacy to know that what you're doing actually works? Um, there's a few methods for monitoring the success of a cloud seeding program. The first and, and longest running or most historical method is to do target control studies where we um, assess storm performance in areas that are seeded versus areas that are not seeded. Another research project that was conducted by the National Centers for Atmospheric Research used high resolution radar to analyze a cloud that was seeded by an airplane. Kamen says the radar showed the storm was producing more rainfall. There have been a variety of different research projects over the years, with the data showing anywhere from a 3 to 12 percent increase in rainfall. This cloud seeding was actually impacting the composition of that storm cell and producing um, you know, larger water droplets, larger, more complex snowflakes and other things. There's actually two different ways to cloud seed a storm. We just talked about the first mechanism that is using an airplane that flies into the cloud and drops that silver iodide. But there is a second mechanism, and that is the use of a ground generator. Now with a ground generator, what you'd want to do is to put it on the windward side of the mountain. You would want to put it about 45 miles to the west of where you want that increased precipitation. And just like the airplane, what it's going to do is put silver iodide into the atmosphere. That's going to act like cloud condensation nuclei, and that's going to lead to increased precipitation. Kamins highlights that cloud seeding is cheap, costing $5 to $10 per acre foot. And he says the chemical silver iodide is safe for the environment. Do the chemicals that you use pose a threat to humans on Earth? Yeah, not at all. Again, all of this is very carefully monitored. We're using incredibly low concentrations of material. Oregon Senator Lynn Finley has been trying to bring cloud seeding to Oregon for a long time. He sponsored Senate Bill 58, which got struck down by the Senate Natural Resources Committee because a couple state agencies pushed back on it. Uh, Oregon Water Resources came to me when they looked first seen the bill and said, we don't want to do this. And I said, why wouldn't you want to increase your water supply by, by 8 to 12 percent? And they said, well, we don't have time. And why do you feel like the Water Resources Department doesn't want to move forward with this? Some of the, some of the, the stigma with cloud seeding is perhaps we're messing with Mother Nature. Uh, and, and that's one argument I, that the people have told me, says we shouldn't mess with Mother Nature. She'll drop what she drops. I don't particularly agree with that. We mess with Mother Nature all the time. Larry O'Neill, who's a climatologist at Oregon State University, is all too aware of the drought issues in Oregon. But he will admit he's skeptical of bringing cloud seeding to Oregon. Are you a proponent of cloud seeding? I'm going to say that I'm not a proponent of cloud seeding. And the reason is, is because the amount that you get out of it is not very much. So even if we get 10% more rain out of it, um, that would not have done much to alleviate the drought we just were in or any other droughts we've been in. Right now, there is no cloud seeding happening in Oregon. But O'Neill says back in the 1950s, cloud seeding was attempted twice in Oregon. One of the missions was done by Portland General Electric. Since then, 
there have been no additional documented attempts at cloud seeding. But O'Neill is worried that if we try to do it again, there will be repercussions. There are concerns that with any weather modification technique is that there are unintended consequences. Which led me to ask Kamins the question whether or not this could create a water war between states. In Oregon, if we start seeding clouds, could Idaho get mad at us and be like, OK, now you're taking water resources from us? Storm systems are so inefficient at dropping their moisture and at converting their moisture into rain and precipitation that we're not robbing Peter to pay Paul. Um, you know, a typical storm system will only drop about 10% of its available moisture. And if we look at a three to 10% increase on that 10%, you know, a storm's gonna drop 10.3 or 11% of its available moisture instead of 10. So the vast majority of the moisture in that storm deck is still proceeding on to the next watershed.